This presentation deals with the design of goods and services and um, we want to sort of just explore what is a sort of a typical process that is used when an organization is attempted to either design or redesign its products and services. Now, all we have to do is to just think for a moment over the last 10 years um, or so and think about certain products and how they've changed. For example, the cell phones. Remember when cell phones used to be this sort of huge uh, piece of equipment that we used to have to attach to our heads. Um, when Wi-Fi was not readily available, when apps um, that that basically uh, our our products and offering services uh, with them were not uh, available, or if we think about how we went from a Walkman, which was a cassette Walkman, to a Discman, and then from a Discman to an MP3 player, and before you know it, instead of having a separate MP3 player. Our cell phones uh, could actually be a computer, an MP3 player, a camera, a telephone, all of those sorts of things. So you see that uh, over time, uh, products and services have changed. And um, the sort of quest for being ahead of the curve continues in a number of areas, in a number of industries, uh, particularly when we think about the electronics industry, uh, things like cell phones. Um, we see new products being introduced almost on an annual basis and in fact um, it's even possible that uh, we could see new cell phones being introduced every six months. So here's a case where some of these companies like Samsung and Apple, Motorola etc, Blackberry are competing on the basis of design and of course there's some other aspects of their competitive strategy but certainly the design of goods and services particularly goods in that context, is of extreme importance. So this uh, particular chapter, we're going to just sort of talk a bit about the product life cycle, because all products go through a life cycle, and even services as well, where they're introduced and eventually they decline, and uh, the cycle of uh, starts over again when you introduce a new product or you modify that existing product. We want to get you familiar a little bit with the product development system. There's a very useful tool called a house of quality that was designed for quality purposes but has applications in the context of uh, product and service design. So we will sort of introduce you to that tool and then talk a bit about uh, the notion of time-based competition where in essence we refer to the sort of a product development time or lead time or service development lead time and if you're competing on that basis then you want to be one of the first people to market with your new products and services. When you complete this particular chapter we should hopefully know how to describe how products and services are defined by operations management, talk a bit about some of the documents that are needed for production describe customer participation in the design and production of services and um, if we have some time we may get into the application of decision trees for product design issues uh, so we'll get into that a little bit later so when we're talking about a particular product design that product has to have some sort of objective and so the objective of product decision and design is to develop and implement a product strategy that meets the demands for the marketplace with some sort of competitive advantage attached to it. Uh, so the idea is that when you think of the 10 decision areas of OM, we may have to make service decisions and product decisions. And the idea is that there is a need out there, there's a customer market uh, out there, and we have to be able to produce that product or that service to meet the needs of customers. All right. So one of the things that we know is that um, companies that are that are highly progressive or highly successful often scan their goods and services to look for opportunities for improvement. Uh, they recognize the fact that customers change their tastes, their requirements over time, and in order to stay relevant then the organization has to consider the possibility of redesigning 
its uh, product or service strategy. And then to achieve that, there has to be some sort of uh, relationship between that product decision or that service decision and some of the other aspects of operations management. Right? So customers, we have to keep in mind, uh, they buy satisfaction, not just a physical good or particular service. And that satisfaction comes when the requirements are actually met. So because of changing requirements, companies have to consider changing their products and services constantly. So when you think about your product or your service strategy, uh, it has to be aligned to the way in which the company intends to gain competitive advantage. And so some firms might actually compete on differentiation. And differentiation often refers to sort of a an emphasis on things such as quality, something that is distinctive that makes the organization unique. And Shuldai's Hospital, which actually is in um, Ontario, is known to be a particular organization um, that specializes in hernia surgery, predominantly for men, but it has a unique set of characteristics to it. And so therefore, while they compete on cost to some extent, they are differentiated service when you compare them to hospitals and other form, other clinics that actually provide the same service. Uh, low cost, uh, so you could have a product strategy that is designed for low cost, Taco Bell as an example, or one that is designed for rapid response, uh, where you can see that Toyota wants to be able to respond very quickly to customer demand, and so therefore the whole um, development of the just-in-time uh, strategy with Toyota, I mean, they, they popularize that concept, has to do with the fact that they want to compete on response. So to compete on response, one of the things you have to be able to do is to reduce your lead time, your production lead time or your product development lead time, and so just-in-time enables Toyota to do that. Uh, we must keep in mind that products and services have life cycle, and if we didn't pay attention to that, then we would never know when the product is no longer relevant to a market, um, when the product has sort of uh, reached a mature stage, and therefore we may need to reconsider our competitive strategy in a case like that. Uh, so it's important for us to at least be aware of the notion of a product life cycle. And the typical product life cycle sort of looks like this, where we have an introductory stage, a stage where there's some growth that happens, the product matures, and then eventually declines. So if we think about costs and revenues, then here's what our sort of cost line looks like. In the, you know, in the early stages, we spend a lot of money doing product development, marketing, etc and we're making some design changes. Eventually, the design stabilizes, and after stabilization, then we begin to see the um, development and production costs sort of uh, stabilizing. In other words, you're not spending any more money on development, but you may be spending, you will be spending money on production, obviously. Uh, what happens now is that in the early stages, your sales level are pretty small, but then they eventually grow and they reach a, you know, some sort of a pinnacle. And then after that, we begin to see sales declining slowly and eventually perhaps a, a, competitor, um, a competitor introduces a new product that is a substitute for what we're selling. And then that product might actually phase out. Nobody's buying floppy disk anymore. Nobody's buying the Discman or the Walkman anymore those things, the sales are pretty much zero, all right? Um, unless you want to be able to play some of your old cassettes, and you might still have some use for a Walkman. The Sony Walkman was the standard at the time. What happens now is if you actually look at the difference between your sales and your costs, we see what happens in terms of our cash flow. So here, because costs exceed sales, we have negative cash flow. And at some point, the two things sort of even out where we have zero. So those two lines where cost and sales actually intersect should sort of um, be right over this point right here. And then beyond that, we start to grow some 
some we started to see some um, positive cash flow, and eventually we have some net revenue or profit when you remove some of the other costs involved. All right. So the various phases, let's just uh, go through them quickly. Uh, you have the introductory phase where essentially you're doing some product development, some research, maybe modifying a, a preliminary design, finding who your suppliers are going to be so that you could establish some sort of long-term relationships with your suppliers. So eventually they grow with you and they are able to uh, leverage a relationship that will help to serve your competitive strategy. In the growth phase now, the product begins to stabilize. We start seeing a trend in terms of increasing revenues. Um, at that point, you might be able to better forecast because things are getting a bit more stable. And then you may have to make some decisions around capacity. If you're seeing growth in your sales, you may have to consider adding capacity, whether or not it is long-term capacity or adding capacity uh, by using other things such as uh, subcontracting using contract manufacturers and so on so your capacity strategy becomes quite important at that stage when you're growing and the reason why it's critical is because depending on how long it takes to get to the mature stage at that point you won't be adding any extra capacity but when you start getting to the decline stage now you may find yourself with excess capacity and sometimes that capacity is so expensive, it is very difficult to shed that excess capacity. So while you're growing, you may want to increase your capacity. You have to have a strategy that allows you to be able to reduce your capacity when you will need to eventually when the product now gets into its decline stage. All right. At the maturity stage, what tends to happen is a lot of people have observed the product, they see it's doing well, so a bunch of competitors come in and make it quite difficult. So usually at this point, uh, because you have a lot of competitors, you have to find some way to differentiate yourself. And um, often cost control is very crucial because you have substitutes. And consumers will, as long as their basic needs are met, will tend to go for some of the cheaper products unless they have some sort of brand loyalty. So you find yourself investing in maintaining brand loyalty, but at the same time trying to reduce the costs associated with uh, producing that particular product and so on. In the decline stage, well, the market is shrinking. Uh, so at some point, you may want to actually consider terminating the product offering or doing some sort of redesign of that product uh, so that it could actually find itself going through uh, a new life cycle. So why is it that companies have to now focus on product design or service design where are some of those opportunities and so there are a number of factors that drive that one of course has to do with um, you know the fact that customer needs are changing and the needs the reason why customer needs change is because sometimes we experience economic change so if we're in an economic decline, people are looking for lower cost products because uh, they need to be able to stretch their budgets as much as possible. Uh, sometimes you have sociological and demographic changes. If a neighborhood is changing where it's becoming more ethnically diverse, the products and services that you offer now to that neighborhood has to reflect that diversity. Um, sometimes technological change happens, uh, as we see in terms of once... Um, Wi-Fi became readily available, uh, then we begin to uh, create new products, right? Um, once we're able to store information, in, in, you know, a lot of information on very small devices, then portability, of course, um, became uh, a major, a major um, uh, thrust. And so we see the, the whole use now of cell phones, not just as a, a, a talk device, but also a storage device. So now, you know, your Apple iPhone could have 64 uh, gigabytes of storage, you know, um, or 16 gigabytes of storage or 8 gigabytes of storage. So now we're able to store information on very, very small devices. 
A uh, political change could happen. Where government, may, one particular government, might be very pro-environment and may actually enact some new legislation that really reinforces that. And um, so, therefore, that then puts pressure on companies to redesign their products and services. If you have new regulation that requires stricter environmental standards, uh, market practice, professional standards. So, if standards change over time then you will find that the organization may be forced to respond. So that happens a lot in the housing market where after hurricanes or major disasters, all of a sudden the building codes change and um, so that new products and services have to now be provided so that these houses can meet those uh, new requirements, right? New products are important because they often are responsible for a significant chunk of uh, the sales of a company and so Apple if you ask Apple what percentage of its sales come from the say iPhone 5 now compared to an iPhone 4 well clearly the bulk of the current sales would be from the new products right or its new uh, tablet or whatnot we're talking about Apple TV etc and so forth so there is some correlation between sales and new product introductions and so as a result uh, firms do try to introduce new products because it drives their economic performance. What does a product development system look like? Um, usually uh, it's not, while this looks like a fairly linear process uh, what we tend to have is that we generate a number of ideas and the ideas are sort of triggered by the need to respond to many of the factors that I talked about earlier. So if we generate a number of these ideas and um, we, we then sort of try to do some matching between customer requirements and these ideas. So we say, yeah, you know, we could, you know, we could create a device that allows us to speak, you know, wirelessly. And then um, and we, should, we, should, we have the technology to be able to produce that. So now let's consider creating a phone for customers, for people. And therefore, we will ask the questions, well, what would customers actually want? So based on their requirements, we now go through and develop some specifications, what we call functional specs. And um, so things like, you know, you got to be able to speak through it. You got to be able to um, charge the battery, recharge the battery of the cell phone. You want some good clarity and so forth. Um, you know, and people must be able to, it must be portable, you know. So these are some, some kind of functional specs. And then on the product specs, then you might actually get into the aesthetics of it, the size of it, the speed of it, you know, uh, and some of the other features and so forth. So that comes uh, in terms of the product specs. And then from that, you sort of create a kind of a prototype. You look at the design, you review it, then you test market if the you know the test market is quite successful then you do a product introduction you do some evaluation you get some feedback if you think of software for example when software is introduced you get uh, it's usually introduced as a beta version and then you get some feedback on that software which is now um, sort of uh, taken uh, and, and, and the, the feedback is used now to update the design of that particular product all right. So in the next section, we're going to get into a tool which we call quality function deployment that allows us to take some ideas and uh, develop um, new products from it. In other words, this particular tool is a, is a visual communication tool that allows us to examine customer requirements and then translate that into a product or service design. So we'll do that in section two of this particular chapter.